Hey everybody, it's Kent with KG's Books. Tonight I am in the back of the store. Got one of my safes cracked open. Uh, I'm going to show you some of the fancier books I have hiding in the safe. Um, most bookstores you go to, they uh, if you can get into the back room, you will know that that's where they hide the really good stuff. Also the junk. I have 100 boxes of books in the storage room. Um, but then I also have a few safes with some of the better stuff. So tonight, I'm going to start by showing you this safe. Maybe I'll do a couple other videos showing you the other safes. Um, I don't really worry about people breaking in and stealing my books. I suppose that's a possibility, but um, mostly I would like to protect some of them in case of a fire or tornado. Um, so that's what I got the safes for. Uh, first, I have this really, really incredible binding. King Charles II. Crack that one open for you. Charles II by Osmond Airy. Uh, this one's illustrated, published in 1901, and is limited edition. Limited edition number 53 of 1,250 copies printed. And some beautiful um, artwork in that book. Who do we got there? We got Frances Stewart, Duchess of Richmond. And again, just a very, very incredible binding. Um, I know I've shown off some of these books in some of my previous videos, so you might recognize some of them. Um, other, others of them have never been seen by the public. We got the Tales and Novels of Font La Fontaine. The Tales and Novels in Verse by De La Fontaine in two volumes, published in 1883. This one's nicely illustrated. Has kind of some scandalous illustrations in this one. Let's see if I can show you a couple. And again, really a great condition, two volume set. Uh, I have a few nice copies of Black Beauty. Um, that one's probably not too special. I'm not sure why that's even in the safe. Might be worth about 40 to 50 bucks. Um, again, these kind of pulp books weren't made to survive. Um, and that one is in really good condition. And honestly, if you read that once, it just would not have sur survived. Ooh, would probably wouldn't survive me dropping it either. Uh, another copy of Black Beauty. I really like that one. Again, not overly valuable. That one's probably worth about $75. Um, you'd probably get a beat up copy for 20 bucks. Um, so it has the horse whips and then it has the little horseshoes and then the bits as well. And my light, light keeps turning off. There we go. Uh, next we have Bible Pearls of Promise. Little book, but I really like this one. It has some really cool examples, kind of some um, calligraphy examples. Where's the title page? Okay, well, there's the publishing information 1887. And it just has all kinds of really beautiful penmanship and calligraphy examples. I think most of them are religious. And I don't know why my safe light keeps turning off. Maybe the battery is dying. Check out that. God is faithful, who will not suffer you be the tempted above that ye are able. Corinthians. I think that one is kind of hard to find as well. Not excessively rare, but it's like an old medical book. An Epitone of American Eclectic Practice of Medicine by William Payne, published in 1859. So cool. Civil War era medical book. Let's see if there's any other illustrations. 
Oh, must uh, just been the frontispiece, piece, but again, nice condition. The spine was repaired at some point, but it looks like the original covers. Uh, next, Let's see what we got. The Field and Garden Vegetables of America by Fearing Burr Jr., published in 1863. Cool. Civil War era vegetable gardening book. What do we got? They've got the Puritan squash, cabbage, cauliflower, sea kale, spinach, corn salad. I'm trying to find another illustration to show you. There we go. The English bean plant. Like we got the sweet German, uh, German tur turnip. Again, really nice condition. Um, that one in this condition is probably worth about seventy-five to a hundred dollars. Uh, we got a nice every horse owner cyclopedia. I think I just sold a, um, a copy of nice copy of this in the store. I think this one's from eighteen seventy-three. Nope, copyright 1871. Every Horse Owner cyclo uh, Cyclopedia. Copyright 1871. This one has everything on um, like veterinary medicine for horses as well as training and breeding. Racing. There it looks like you got the anatomy of the horse. Mac. Assume he was a famous trotter. Um, and this one's halfway common. Um, you can get a beat up copy for 20 to 40 bucks. A nice copy is going to be 75 up to 125. And I think my batteries are dying on my, uh, safe light. Uh, facts for farmers. Um, um, what to tell you about this one. This is my favorite farming book. Uh, this is really nice condition. So they had the one volume leather binding, they had a two volume black leather binding, full leather, um, and then they also had a cloth um, version of this. Uh, this one was published in 1864. It has, I think, 20 some plates of um, related to farm animals and gardening, and I think there's a beekeeping one. This plate shows a farmer's snug residence and the same place under a farmer's slack management. Probably shouldn't admit how many copies of this, but I think I have probably four or five copies of this one in my personal collection. Um, every now and again, I put one out on eBay and actually I do have a nice leather one in the store right now, so. It's one of my favorites. Christmas carols, old and new. I also like Christmas books. Christmas carols, new and old by Reverend Hem uh, Henry Ramsdy Bramley. Music edited by John Stainer. Got a nice nativity scene for the frontispiece. Let's see what. Christmas carols we got God rest you merry gentlemen mm. Let's see if I recognize any Jesus in the manger the babe of Bethlehem hmm. otherwise I don't really recognize any of those um, but this book was published in the UK so it's probably more British style and I think I'm going to unhook the lights because they keep oh, turning off on me so the battery's dying. There we go. Hopefully lighting's still good enough for you. This one has a nice modern binding on it. The history of uh, Romish treasons and usurpations, together with a particular account of many uh, gross corruptions and impostures in the Church of Rome. 
highly, highly dishonorable and injurious to the Christian religion. Second edition by Henry Follis, published in 1681. Damn, that one's old. And again, really nice condition. Pretty, pretty clean pages. And someone probably spent probably about three or four hundred bucks on a nice leather binding on that one. So that's pretty cool. Uh, Umi, a Hawaiian boy who became a king. I really like the Art Deco kind of illustrations in this one. Let's see, copyright, or published in 1937. There's Umi on the frontispiece. Lots of really beautiful color illustrations in this book. Uh, here we got a nice copy of Alice in Wonderland. Again, really great condition. By Lewis Carroll, illustrated by Gwynedd M. Hudson. Let's see if there's a copyright date in that one. Don't oh, know date. I, would, I think that's from about the 1920s. Let's see if I can show you some of the color plates. There we go, we got Alice talking to the caterpillar. We got the queen. Oh, we got Rip, Rip Van Winkle, illustrated by Arthur Rackham. Nice leather edition. Check out the spider web on the front cover. Rip Van Winkle by Washington Irving, illustrated by Rackham. Very distinct, colorful style. Well, I don't know, kind of a muted color um, for his illustrations. That one uh, looks like it was copyrighted in 1919. Kind of dreary, muted colors. It's just his style, the greens and the grays and the browns. Not my favorite illustrator in the world, but he's very popular. Next, we got Sleeping Beauty and other fairy tales. I think this is a this is an imitation leather. Um, it's not actual leather. Illustrated by Edmund Dulac. The Sleeping Beauty and Other Fairy Tales from the Old French, retold by Sir Arthur. What is that? An L? Little Couch, illustrated by Edmund Dulac. Uh, I thought this one maybe was a limited edition, but maybe not. Beautiful color plates. Oh, there's Cinderella going to the ball. Again, really, really pretty binding. See the little cherubs. And again, really nice condition. Uh, that one and then this one too both came from the same estate uh, here locally. Tales of Mystery and Imagination by Edgar Allan Poe. This is the original um, box. See if I can set it down carefully. Hopefully not knock it over. Um, and then also the original dust jacket. Um, pretty much perfect condition. And again, the book is also, I don't know, I don't use the word near fine very often to describe books, but I would say the book and dust jacket are near fine. Box is a little on the rough side, but, um, you know, not too many of these survived with the original box. Tales of Mystery and Imagination by Edgar Allan Poe, illustrated by Harry Clark. He has kind of a gory, um, 
grotesque illustration style. That one was published in 1933. Let's see if I can show you some of the other spooky illustrations. Again, condition is absolutely fantastic. And that one's halfway common, um, especially if you're not looking for pristine condition, you could probably find a copy for probably around 50 bucks. Um, I've got my postcard collection. You guys have seen that if you've watched some of my previous videos. Um, this Alice in Wonderland, I know I've shown off a lot on YouTube and Instagram and everywhere. Um, really, really awesome uh, condition and what a beautiful binding. I think that one's from the 1830s. I'll show you the title page here in a second. There you got the mischievous cat on the spine. And again, really great condition. In this condition, you're probably talking about, uh, probably worth about 250 to 300, I think is fair for that. Um, if it was a beat up copy, it'd be like 75 bucks. Alice's Adventures in Wonderland by Lewis Carroll, illustrated by John Tenniel, 1884. Again, everyone recognizes Tenniel's illustrations. I know I have seen them a million times. And that one is not for sale right now. Maybe someday, after I've enjoyed it for a little bit, it might come up on the market. Uh, we got George Washington and His Generals by J.T. Headley, complete in two volumes. And again, that one's um, not super duper rare, but to find them in the fancier binding like this um, and in this condition is a little, a little tough. Um, again, I think you could find like a beat up uh, copy from... You know, this one's from 1850. You could find, probably find a beat-up copy from the 1850s. Not in the fancy binding and not such great condition for probably about 50 bucks. But um, be in such nice condition. I think that set's probably worth about 300 Here's another pretty binding. All of our goldsmith's works. Sometimes they put the the gilt decoration on the back cover, I appreciate that. But the plain stamp design is fine as well. Definitely is not necessary to decorate the rear cover. So we have the poetical and prose works of Oliver Goldsmith with his life. Uh, not dated, but I would think that's from the 1860s, maybe the 1850s. Uh, scouring of the White Horse. Again, that one's not super duper rare, um, but this one's pretty nice condition. Uh, I got to show you a little close up of all the crazy little details on the spine. You got the horse, and then you have all these little men climbing around doing silly stuff. Oh, looks like one's chasing a pig. Two of them chasing pigs. Don't know what that one's doing with the horseshoe. Mm, got some weird shaped people over there. Oh, it looks like those two are fencing, two riding horses. That one has uh, some kind of stick in its hand. I don't know what, if they're playing a sport or what exactly is going on. There you got another trumpeter. Got a guy with a shield. So we have the scouring of the white horse or the long vacation ramble of a London clerk by Hughes, published in 1859. Check out that um, decorative title page. And I guess I don't know if that would also be the decorative title page or the frontispiece. What exactly you'd consider it? So I can read the scouring of the white horse. What does that say? A country legend it looks like. That is some uh, funky font. And again, a wild illustration. I 
Well, that's a sad one. Looks like a little boy mourning one of his parents. Ooh, there we go. Like an, it looks like an interesting read and a pretty binding to boot. Uh, I think I just sold a copy of this on eBay here a couple of weeks ago. Got the, what is that, Seven Headed Dragon. This is a book on popes and I think uh, Catholic Church Corruption maybe. The Great Red Dragon, or The Master Key to Popery by Anthony Gavin, published in 1854. Again, copies of this book um, usually range in about $100 to $200 range. This one's nice condition, so it definitely would be on the higher end. Could bring $250 or $300, um, just because it's such nice condition. Not overly rare. Um, there's copies of that that pop up on eBay halfway regularly. Here we have the Flora's Lexicon. Ooh, check out the rear cover too. Yes, 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 we like that. Appreciate that. Again, all the flowers and birds. Not sure if she's some sort of fairy. So many flowers and some birds. So we have the Flora's Lexicon, an interpretation of the language and sentiment of flowers, published in 1865. Looks like we got a color frontispiece here. Some sort of flowers, not exactly sure. I'm not sure if there's any other illustrations. Oh, no, there's another color plate. Don't think those are hand colored. I'm not sure what exact printing process that is. Oh, there's another color plate. Yeah, and really fancy binding. That one's probably worth about two to three hundred. It's all about condition. We got the life of Jesus Christ and the apostles. Nice, pretty binding. That one's probably um, only worth about fifty bucks. The true prince of the pride, the tribe of Judah, or life scene, scenes of the Messiah by Reverend Rufus W. Clark, published in eighteen sixty. And pretty decent condition. Uh, the revolt, the revolt of angels. Just kind of a cool Art Deco book by Anatole France. She was a French author, author, so this one was translated by Miss Wilfred Jackson. Uh, copyright 1914. I have quite a few um, copies of the one from the 1920s, um, with the really cool black Art Deco. Um, cover and illustrations. This one I think is a little lot more rare than those. Let's see what we got here. The Christian's defense against the fear of death, fears of death with seasonable directions how to prepare ourselves to die well. Translated by Marius Diasigni. Published in 1768. What a wild frontispiece on that one. Check out the in the bottom corner you have looks like a couple little kids going into the mouth of a monster. You got the knight, you got the little devils. Oh, it looks like you got some people being crucified back there. Yikes, those devils don't have feet. Look at that. Scary.
here we have miscellany the part third containing one an essay on popular discontents two an essay upon health and long life three a defense of the um, a defense of the essay upon ancient and modern learning with some pieces by sir william temple published in 1701 Let's see if there's some sort of not sure if that's mostly uh a religious book or what exactly when after a revolt of the egyptians from the persian empire which lasted the the pro and prospered in two or three kings reigns one of the antaxerxes subdued the subdued egypt and this last of the egyptian kings reduced the whole kingdom to the persian obedience but enraged at the rebellion and obstinate resistance executed his conquest with such rage that besides infinite slaughters he raised many of their cities and the walls of them all ruined their temples destroyed or dispersed their priests and um, the archives or records of those colleges and whatever of them he thought fit to preserve he carried away with him into persia <laughs> nice little excerpt on ancient history All right, we've got the homeopathic domestic physician. People seem to love homeopathy books. By J.H. Pulte, published in 1856. Um, yeah, that one's probably pretty rare. And again, condition. Um, a beat up copy of something like this would probably be about 50 bucks, but being in nice condition, I can knock it up to like 150 bucks. Or whatever a customer will pay, I suppose. All right, on to the next shelf. Cheap modern binding on this one. Uh, notes and observations upon some passages of scriptures with other learned tracts by John Gregory, published in 1650. Whew. That's an earlier one. show you some of the text you can pause this video if you want to read it quick Let's see what we got looks like we have some things bookmarked here we have a sermon um so this is a compilation of different works a sermon upon the Re resurrection by john gregory uh 1649 pretty incredible Let's see what some of the other titles are A discovery of the ancient custom in the Church of Sarum, making the anniversary, making an anniversary bishop among the Christers, published in 1649 as well. Got a nice little woodcut illustration there on the title page. Most of these books I bought. Oh, check out that monster band. Um. Most of these books I bought on eBay. Um, some of them I bought at local bookstores. Um, at book fairs and stuff like that. But I would say 90-some percent of these all came on e from eBay. Uh, the Several Accounts of Time Among All Nations from the Creation to the Present Age. Again, by John Gregory, 1649. He was a busy man in 1649, or at least the printer was, to get all these out. The Assyrian Monarchy being a short description of its rise and fall, 1649. And last one, a description and use of terrestrial globes, 1649. Let's see if that one has any... Well, no illustrations in that one, but there was some kind of geometry. One second, let me pick up this pile of books. Nothing was damaged. That's good. Um, what was I saying? I don't remember. All right, next one. We got another nice copy of Alice in Wonderland. You can 
never have too many copies of Alice in Wonderland again. Really nice condition. Got a nice color frontispiece. Again, Alice in Wonderland. That's copyright 1924. Alice in Wonderland is kind of a dime a dozen, but if you get better condition and nicely illustrated ones, um, that one's probably worth about 75 bucks. Shout out to Patrick for telling me I should uh, talk about prices of stuff in some of my videos. I'm sure he's watching this right now. Uh, I think I bought this one at the Twin Cities Book Fair a few years ago. Might put it on eBay. The condition's not ideal. Uh, the Folly and Unreasonableness of Atheism. Eight Sermons by Richard Bentley. $16.99. So again... It's 320 some years old, so um, you might expect the cover to be falling off at that point. And I mean, many of the books. Um, I don't know if this binding was quite from that era. It might have been. Looks very old. Um, but I mean, many of the books were, were rebound. Um, sometimes a few different times over the last 300 years. Oh, The Birds of Britain. I know I've shown this one off before. The Birds of Britain. Again, I just really uh, appreciate the binding on this one. I don't know if that's a real species of bird or is that some kind of phoenix? Hmm, might be a, some kind of crane. I am not overly familiar with British birds. The Birds of Britain by Jane Lewis Bonhote. A hundred illustrations in color by H. E. Dresser, published in 1907. So again, beautiful binding and color illustrated plates. And again, whoosh, awesome condition. All right, we have art in the Middle Ages. Again, nice leather binding. Oh, no, the page edges aren't marbled. Shocked, kind of shocked. Would have been really pretty if they would have, at least we got uh, nice end papers. The Arts of the Middle Ages and at the period, period of the Renaissance by Paul LaCroix of 19... Chromolithographic Prints, published in 1870. Again, highly, highly illustrated. Beautiful binding. Great condition. Everything you want in a book. Got a nice copy of The Little Prince. The Little Prince by Anatole de Saint Aubespree. Oh, that's a fifth printing. Um, I really don't know too much about modern, modern books. Um, but someone Spent a little bit of money putting a nice leather binding on that one. Ooh, we got The Tempest by Shakespeare. It's illustrated by Rackham. Really nice full leather binding on that one. And really fantastic condition. The Tempest by William Shakespeare, illustrated by Arthur Rackham. I'll show you a few of the illustrations. Oh, and you got the original cover bound in the back. I always like when they do that. A little nice extra detail. Again, not really um, bright colors. Kind of muted, dull colors. But that's uh, Rackham style. We have a nice copy of Lives of the Presidents. 
Got the eagle on the back, capital on the front. Pretty decorations on the spine. Lives of the Presidents of the United States with bio biographical notices of the signers of the Declaration of Independence. Sketcher, sketches of the most remarkable events in the history of our country by Robert W. Lincoln, published in 1842. Uh, that one's probably worth about 75 to 100 Again, you can get beat-up copies of all these books for probably about 30 bucks, But if they're in good condition, that just knocks them right up. Um, this is Speaking My Mind by Ronald Reagan. And it is signed, I don't know if it's a yep, limited edition number, 987 of 5,000 copies. Signed. Um... You know, being 5,000 signed copies, this one isn't super duper rare. But I think that one might be worth about 1,000 bucks. All right, on to the next shelf. Oh, I showed these off in another video on um, the little Ye Yellow Jacket series. The covers are fairly boring but I just really like the little wasp or bees on the spine I think those are from the 1870s yep two little yellow jackets by Miss E.E. E. Boyd published in 1874 um, I think they also had a different color maybe a yellow binding of these um, I think the, I got these pretty cheap I think I paid about $50 for the three um and like, there's a few other ones online and they're asking crazy prices, but realistically, I think they're worth 30 bucks a piece. Um, but condition, so. Oh, this is a five volume set, works of Jane Austen. Just bought these a few months ago from a uh, Seller in the UK, complete in five volumes. I think these are from the 1850s. I think 1856, if I remember correctly. Sense and Sensibility by Miss Jane Austen, published in 1856, yeah. Um, you know, it's pretty early for Jane Austen. I think the first editions were like the 1820s and 1830s. Um, nice five volumes. The spines have been repaired, but pretty uh, presentable condition. I know I've shown these off a few different times. We have the History of Hudson Bay by Mr. Hutchinson. History of the Colony of Massachusetts Bay from the first settlement therein, thereof in 1628 until its incorporation with the Colony of Plymouth, Province of Maine, etc. By Mr. Hutchinson. This is second edition. Volume 1 was published in 1765. I think volume two was published in 1768. Um, this set is halfway common. You can find sets on A books all the time for about $500. Um, being in such good condition and really fancy leather bindings, that knocks them up a little bit. Might be worth about a thousand bucks for that set. Cape North by F.D. Omini, 25 plates, published in 1939, it's like one of the deckhands on the ship, sure was in a good mood, North Cape, one of the little companies of tireless ships, oh, they caught the quite a quite another fish there. Mother load. Oh, and this one actually has a cool prize book plate. Arthur Thompson Simms Simmons Prize, prize for geography, awarded 
to Alan John Withy, 1939, at the general school examination. I would assume that's the school's crest right there. Nice leather binding. In impeccable condition. Uh, here we have Thompson's Halloween by Margaret and Mary Baker. Cool book on Halloween. Got the nice witch. Published in 1942. People are kind of obsessed with Halloween stuff. Halloween books, Halloween costumes, old Halloween decor. The Black Cats and the Tinner's Wife by Mary and Margaret Baker again. Again, cool old Halloween book. The Minstrel by James Beattie, illustrated, published in 1858. Oh, probably get a million comments on this one that it could be poison, could be arsenic. Arsenic green binding, not sure. Don't think you have to worry about touching an arsenic binding, I would assume. Don't probably want to wash your hands after handling it. Probably don't want to lick it. Or eat food off of it. But I'm not a medical professional, so do not take my advice. The Lord of the Isles by Sir Walter Scott, published in Sacred Poetry of the Olden Time, selected and arranged by Reverend L.B. White, published in 1864. Odes and Sonnets. Sonnets Illustrated, what a title page on that one. Pictures in this book are by Burkett Foster. What does that say? The Ornamental Designs by John Slay, engraved and printed by the brothers Dal Zeal. Published in 1859. Kind of a tinted, really lightly tinted color illustration. Color initials. All right, on to the next shelf. And I think I already showed this one off in one of the last videos as well, but I'll show it again quick. Two volume set. Oh no, actually, this one, mm, maybe it was in my new arrivals video. An account of the European settlements in America. In two volumes, published in 1860, nope, 1870. Uh, volume one has a map of South America. And volume two has the map of North America. Let me get a different hold on this map of North America. Which about California. I mean, it's not, not a horribly inaccurate you got the gulf of mexico you got florida you got the great lakes i mean it's not a horrible you got the mississippi river you got the louisiana territory new mexico territory i mean it's not horrible for being from the 1770 got the kind of got the island or is california an island it doesn't quite looks like it's attached there so again, very cool piece of Americana. Uh, this one I've shown off as well. But it's worth looking at again. Charters of the British Colonies in America. I think this one's from 1774. 
has the charters of Massachusetts Bay, Connecticut, Rhode Island, Virginia, Pennsylvania, Maryland, and Georgia. Um, we're about halfway through, so maybe I will end this video and make another video uh, here in a couple days. So thank you all for watching. I really appreciate it.